Sinclair. Your witness, Mr. McBride. Mr. Sinclair, you stated that you were driving past the warehouse on the night of April 17th? Yes. And do you remember the time? It was around midnight. Did you tell us what you saw? Objection. The witness has already told the court. Then it won't be difficult for Mr. Sinclair to repeat his eyewitness testimony. One more time for the record. Overruled. You may answer. I was driving home past the warehouse. It was late and I was tired, so I wasn't traveling fast. That's when you saw something. I saw a man dressed in a security guard's uniform walking along the loading dock of a warehouse. And then what happened? The man stopped to look at something, so I slowed down even more to see what he was doing. Out from a dumpster came a man that startled me. The man hit the guard on the head with a pipe and then ran away. What did you do? I took out my cell phone and called the police. Is that man at the court today? Yes. Right there. You sure this is the man? Absolutely. It was late at night. You stated you were tired. You were at least 100 feet away. It must have been a very traumatic experience. Objection. Counsel is needing the witness to change his story. Your Honor, with all due respect, this preliminary hearing is to decide whether to charge my client with murder based on an eyewitness report made late at night from a distance. Now, forensics has already testified there were no fingerprints on the murder weapon. So the only thing tying my client to the murder scene is Mr. Sinclair's positive identification of my client. Overruled. Now, Mr. Sinclair, you are positive that this is the man. It was him. Would it help if I had him stand up and pretend to run away? If you insist, but it won't change my mind. I know it was him. Who is this? Mr. Newberry, my associate. This is Matthew Turner, my client. The prosecution withdraws its charge against Mr. Turner. Are you Heather Bronson? What do you want? I was hoping I might find some work through you. Work? Natalie told me about you. Natalie? Yeah, she's my best friend back home in Omaha. Well, what exactly did Natalie tell you? That you helped her find work as a dinner escort to some businessmen and that it really helped her while she was trying to get her acting career started. Well, why don't you come in? What's your name? Uh, Marilyn Fletcher. Marilyn. <laughs> well, have a seat, Marilyn. Oh, thank you. So, uh, how is Natalie? Yeah. I guess she's doing all right. Uh, she told me she met a wonderful businessman through your service and that he offered her a job traveling to Japan. 
That was six months ago, and I haven't heard from her since, so I guess she's having a pretty good time. I'm sorry, may I use your powder room? I came straight over as soon as I checked into the hotel. Oh, absolutely. It's just down the hall, the second door on the right. Thank you. <laughs> Hello? Harold, it's Heather. I didn't think I was going to hear from you. Well, you're in luck. I can accommodate you after all. A little something has just arrived hot off the assembly line from Nebraska. Ooh, sounds wonderful. Oh, it's just the model you've been looking for. 500 for dinner and a look-see. What do you mean a look-see? Well, you like what you see, and then we'll talk about a real test drive. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, I'll make a dinner reservation for 7.30 tonight. At the hotel? Of course. Uh, we deal with this the usual way. No, you pay me directly. And remember, Harold, tonight is just a look-see. I wouldn't have it any other way. Well, I'll drop by and collect later. Want to go to San Francisco this weekend? What? So we'd fly out Saturday morning, have dinner in Sausalito, spend the night. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, that's nice. But no. What do you mean, no? Mac, you're a good guy. You were a great cop and you're a terrific lawyer. And I'll always do whatever I can to help you. You're saying what I think you're saying? What I am saying is that I will always be there for you as a friend. Just don't expect anything more. I've got someone, and you know what else? I can count on him. Roberta, who is he? Roberta! That's a very pretty dress, Marilyn. Thank you. So Heather tells me that you're new in town. Thank you. Brand new. I just arrived today, actually. Today? From? Nebraska. That's wonderful. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> it's just a lot of corn. And corn-fed beauties. Thank you. It must be really difficult for you. What? Losing your wife. Huh? But Heather told me you're a widower. Um... I think about her all the time. I'm sorry. I don't mean to bring up memories to make you sad. I guess I'm not very good at this. I've never done it before. No, you never have done this before, have you? Marilyn, what did I tell you? Isn't that view spectacular? <laughs> it's beautiful. We don't have anything like this in Nebraska. Come over here. <laughs> Did you call the cab? <laughs> I'll wait downstairs in the lobby. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What is it? You want more money? I'll give you all the money you want. Uh, look, I, I don't want anything. I just want to leave. What do you think this evening was about? Let me go, you creep! Tell me exactly what happened. Harold Paxton. I just met him for dinner tonight at the Grand Hotel. And then he took me to his hotel suite and he tried to attack me. And Harold Paxton, he's your boyfriend, your husband? No, no, Heather Bronson set it up. Heather Bronson used to run Hollywood's most famous call girl service. She sent me out to be a call girl? We'll check in to Mr. Paxton at the Grand Hotel and we'll send someone over to have a look at you. Oh, I could kill her for this. <laughs> Miss, we're not finished here. If you could just... Hey, easy. Miss Bronson? Heather? 
together. Just to Charlie one four hour. Here you go. Thank you, Roberta. Please tell Mr. Collins that I'm obliged to give the same information to the defendant's attorney. Crimes? Not a problem. Thank you. Mm-hmm. What's up? Hey, thanks for coming right in. Look, an arrest was made last night. A young woman, she can use some help. Your kind of help. Somebody you know? No, she only arrived here in L.A. yesterday, from Nebraska. In trouble her first day. Hmm. What's she charged with? Murder. Who is she suspected of killing? Heather Bronson. Wow, from the cornfields of Nebraska right into the sticky arms of Heather Bronson and directly to jail. Busy day. Mac, I questioned her when they brought her in. She's a naive, unsophisticated young woman who's never been 50 miles away from her home. And you don't think she came to L.A. purposely to work for Heather Bronson? Absolutely not. Her parents died when she was a kid. Her grandmother raised her. Her grandmother gave her $500, a bus ticket, and her blessing. Something tells me that there's a lot more to Heather Bronson's death. Ooh, Roberta, a gut feeling. She's being arraigned this morning. Coincidence. I was just on my way to court looking on a case that Phil took on his own. You already knew that, didn't you? Thank you. Her name's Marilyn Fletcher. Thanks, man. Yes! Hey, didn't you tell me 10.30? I did. Where's your client? Uh, right there. What happened? The plaintiff withdrew his case of action. Terrific. No, it's not terrific. My client told the plaintiff that I worked for you, and he said if he didn't go for a small settlement, then you were going to come in here onto the case and destroy him. He what? Yeah. I thought you took this case because you said you knew the guy. We went to college together. Well, I would keep that to myself. Well, at least he paid. Hey, it's not about the client's check, all right, Philip? It's about the client. Have you tried cashing the check? Uh, here you go. Defendant will restrain herself. Sit down. Right here. Either you control your client, or I'll find her in contempt and have her removed from this courtroom. Case number 287542, People versus Marilyn Fletcher. First degree murder. Uh, Your Honor, in, in. You know her lawyer? It's Calvin Grimes, she's a public defender. Very good. Uh, I think he passed the bar on his third try. Your Honor, given that the defendant has no ties to the community, no job, no friends, and literally arrived in Los Angeles on the day of the murder, I have to ask the court to consider her a serious flight risk and therefore deny bail. Counsel of Defense has anything to say? Uh, yes, Your Honor. My client has no criminal record of any kind. How do you plead? Not guilty. The court concurs with the district attorney. Bail is denied. The defendant is remanded to the county jail until the time of her preliminary hearing. Thank you, gentlemen. Next that case, went well, please. don't you think? Now that's a client. Thanks. So you never told me which public defender was representing Marilyn Fletcher. 
I take it you attended her arraignment. Yeah, Phil says this Calvin Grimes guy took like three times just to pass the bar. I didn't want to influence your decision until you had a chance to see her. What do you think? I find it hard to believe that Marilyn Fletcher could kill anybody. I also don't think that she would have knowingly gone to work for Heather Bronson. I also don't think she has a chance. Norman Collins is prosecuting. He's fair. Oh, he's a lizard. Only cares about how many convictions he gets. Mac! What, he's a fair lizard? I'll arrange a meeting. Right. Want to go to lunch? No. So, you only met the deceased the same day that she was murdered? Yes. And then you went on a blind date that she had arranged for you? It was just supposed to be dinner with a lonely widower. You believed that? Why shouldn't I? Well, didn't your friend Natalie tell you that Heather had helped? Her? Yes. And she didn't tell you what kind of work it was? No, if I'd have known, I never would have gone. It's just, Heather seemed so nice, and she had this big, beautiful home. Mm, yeah, well, being a beautiful doesn't necessarily mean a whole lot in this town. All right, so you went back to confront Heather. She didn't answer. The door's open. Yes. That's when I went in and found her. It was so horrible. Is she anybody? No, but... I heard a door open as soon as I came into the house. Somebody was there before me. All right, well, unless you could tell me who that person is, Marilyn, it's not much help. Yes, I invited her up to my suite to have coffee and to see the view. That's all. How was I supposed to know she was emotionally unstable? Mr. Paxton, did you appear in front of Miss Fletcher wearing nothing but a bathrobe? Well, yes, Do you but... often entertain young women you've just met in your bathrobe? No, of course not. What? You thought she was interested in having sex with you, so you decided to dress appropriately? I thought that's what I was supposed uh, what to... What Mr. Paxton means is that he wouldn't knowingly engage a prostitute, since that would be illegal. She said she was under the impression that she was only going to have dinner with a lonely widower who craved conversation and companionship. Don't let her kid you. She knew the score. Are you a widower, Mr. Paxton? I asked, are you a widower? No. Can you tell me how Miss Fletcher's dress got torn? She demanded money from me. When I refused, she tore her dress and threatened to go to the police. Did she also slap herself hard enough to make both eyes swell up? Maybe she had another date after she left me. Tell me, Mr. Paxton, had Heather Bronson provided you with escorts on previous occasions? Yes. You weren't angry with Heather Bronson for setting you up with a bad date? No. Can you account for your time from 9.15 when the doorman stated that Miss Fletcher left the hotel until 10 o'clock when Heather Bronson was murdered? Are you suggesting that Mr. Paxton is involved? I'm not suggesting anything. I'm merely asking him to account for his time after Miss Fletcher left his hotel suite. Well, Mr. Paxton called me immediately to report the woman's unsavory behavior. I uh, went to his hotel suite immediately to meet with him and um, was with him until after midnight. Smart move to call your lawyer. Look, detective, there is no evidence that a sexual assault took place. As far as the other unfortunate matter goes, my client can account for his time. Either book him or release him. Computer. See if there's anything on there we can use. It's a good idea. Mm. Your dog. Oh, oh okay. don't pet Jack. I haven't broken him a biting. Yeah. Sit. Be a good boy. Can we help you? That depends. Who are you? Beg your pardon. Um, my name is McBride. This is Phil Newberry. You're a Victoria Sawyer. 
Have we met? No. I've seen your picture in the papers. And I've donated a few dollars to your charities over the years. So have I. Well, as far as I'm concerned, your philanthropic ventures deserve all the accolades they receive. Particularly your work with troubled young women. Was Heather one of your wayward girls? Once. Not wayward, troubled. She just needed guidance. Well, I was trying to say by the um, look at this house, you succeeded with her. I never thought it would come to this. She was such a bright girl, so capable. She could have become anything she wanted to become. She just couldn't resist uh, the excitement, I suppose. I guess I really never understood her. Now, you stay. All those weeks of obedience training, hope they do some good, hmm? Have you any idea of anyone who would want to harm her? Didn't they arrest uh, some young woman? Yes, uh, they did. She's our client. Then you're lawyers, not police. I shouldn't really be talking to you, should I? I just came by to, uh, to get a framed picture of Heather and me. Why did that woman want to kill Heather? I don't think she did. I believe that she was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. You think she's innocent? I do. You know, you should maybe go talk to her yourself. I'd imagine you're a very good judge of character. How did she know Heather? She was new in town. She was broke. Heather set her up as um, an escort. Did not go well. As I recall, you were a character witness at Heather's trial. Yes. And when she got probation, she swore that she would straighten up her life. But she liked getting and spending lots of money. I think I got something in here. Ah, there it is. I may just go see that woman of yours. Nice to meet both of you. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Come on, Jack. Pleasure. Bye-bye. Come on, Jack. Where have you gone? Well, it looks like she wrote an email to three different people to bring money to her house the night she was murdered. And there it is. Holy cow. Looks like she was not only back in business, but she was blackmailing some of her high-profile clients. Seems like it. Why would she do that? I don't know. But you know what? Now we've got three people with a better motive for killing her than Marilyn. When were the other two supposed to come? Mm. Nero 237 at 9.30 and untouched one at 10.30. You know what? Do this. Send them each an email entitled Good News, Bad News. Good news is somebody's been arrested for Heather's murder. The bad news is I've got the goods on you. Show up tomorrow at noon at Carson's Coffee Shop. Pick up an envelope addressed to your screen name that will prove that I do. So how's Jesse? Oh, he's a big help. Good, glad to hear that. Yeah, I threw a stick and told him to fetch. Now he's picking up every loose stick in the yard. What? He's retrieving for you? Uh, even better, he's putting them all in a neat little pile. That's very funny. Well, I'm glad to uh, hear he's helping. You know what, Russell? I'll talk to you later. I gotta go. Yeah, hi, Phil. No, no, I, I, yeah, it's working. One of our suspects is smarter than I would uh, figure, though. Send a messenger service to pick up the package. All right. So listen, are the police finished with the crime scene? Good. Take Heather's computer back to the office, play a little of your hacker magic, see if there's anything else there. You know what? I got to go. Looks like we've got another customer. I'll talk to you later.
You got a problem? No. You were following me, right? You know, I gotta tell you, that sounds a little paranoid. Maybe we should have a conversation with Dr. Phil about that. You some kind of comedian? No, not really. I'm a... Uh... In a lot of trouble. baby. How do you know everybody? I used to work here before your time, I'm sure. What do we have here? I can explain. Get the paperwork started. Come on, Mac. Oh, hey, I want my Jet Hawks hat back, too. It's in your car. Thank you. So, what happened? That's tailing him. Not doing a very good job of it, it would seem. I guess I'm a little out of practice. You want to explain why you were tailing a police officer? Didn't know he was a cop. Not just a regular cop, either. He's part of the detail assigned to the mayor. I'm sorry, the mayor. That's right. Mac, if they want to make a case out of this, I may not be able to help you. Oh, no, you know what? You just did help me, dear. Detective Hansen. You sure? All right, it's your call. Yeah, will do. Oh, looks like you may still have some friends in the police department after all. Officer Taylor wants to drop all the charges. He does. You're free to go. And he wants me to tell you that he's sorry for the misunderstanding. I bet he did. I know why, too. Why is that, Mac? I'll tell you in San Francisco. Go. Leave. Hi. Oh, may I help you? Yes, I would like to see Mayor Theodore. I'm afraid no one sees him without an appointment. Please, just just tell him. I want to discuss Nero 237. 237. He'll want to see me, trust me. Just a minute. And yes, I have a gentleman out here that says he wants to discuss Nero 237. Officer Taylor. Thanks for dropping the charges. Hey. Boss know what you were up to during your off-duty hours? He was off-duty, wasn't he, sir, when he picked up a package intended for you at Carson's Coffee House today? I mean, he wouldn't be doing your personal errands on taxpayer time, would he? My name's McBride. I'm representing the defendant in the Heather Bronson murder. Come on. You don't barge into the mayor's office unannounced like this. It's all right. Just what is it you want, Mr. McBride? I would like to discuss Nero 237. In private, it might be better, but it's your call. More compelling question, Your Honor, is why was Heather Bronson blackmailing you? Mr. McBride, I'd like you to meet my wife, Elaine. Mr. McBride? My pleasure. I called my wife and asked her to join us. Let's get to the chase, Mr. McBride. Before I met Joe, I worked for Heather Bronson. 
Like a lot of girls, I came to Los Angeles to be an actress. And like a lot of girls, I struggled. Sounds familiar. I heard about Heather, and soon I was making more money than I ever imagined. Through Heather's clients, I began to get invited to parties. I met Joe at one. No, no. Joe was never a client of Heather's. My life changed when I met him. So Heather Bronson was blackmailing your husband because of your past. Do you know the field day the press would have had with that? It would have ended Joe's political career. Joe is well aware of my past. I told him all about it when he asked to marry me. And he still asked. So when you found that email, you thought maybe I killed Heather to stop her from exposing me as a client. Cross my mind. I understand that. I would have done the same thing if I were in your shoes. I insisted on delivering the money to Heather because I wanted to face her and put an end to things. I well, put you at the scene of the crime the night Heather was murdered. Lorraine, what a surprise. I was expecting Joe. Oh, don't tell me our fearless mayor has sent you to do his dirty work. You really are despicable, Heather. No, I'm a businesswoman who's a little bit short on liquid assets these days. So, did you bring the money? Or are you prepared to work off what he owes me? How do I know if I pay, you won't come back for more? I guess you're just gonna have to trust me. You know, some of your old clients still ask for you. <laughs> she said some very hurtful things to me. But all I did was give her the money and leave. A manila envelope filled with $100 bills. Would I have left the money if I killed her? Well, probably not, but the police haven't found any. Well, it must be there somewhere. I gave it to her and she counted it before I left. Did you get his license number? No, he purposely covered it with mud. He busted the Viper's tail out on a trash can coming out of the driveway, so... He'll probably take it to the dealership to order the part and I can trace it from there. Good. Well, you know what? There's nothing in here. Maybe you don't know where to look. Oh. Hello, Miss Sawyer. Back again? Yes, I saw your Jeep outside. You know something? Maybe you could be uh, of help to us. Do you know where Heather might have kept things that were important to her? I helped her decorate. Um, as a matter of fact, I bought her this armoire. Huh. She was fascinated with it because it contains a secret compartment. was telling the truth. Heather was um, extorting money from people, and we think that one of them decided to kill her instead of pay her. Thank you very much for your help. Yeah. Oh, um, by the way, I went to the jail this morning and I uh, met your client. And I must agree with you, she's innocent. So if I can be of any help, please don't hesitate. I gotta go. Bye. Bye. Thanks a lot. <sighs> Looks like she eliminated one of our suspects for us. You might be right. What, what are you planning to do with all that money? We'll be back to the mayor. No use ruining his life over something he and his wife put to bed years ago. You have to find that viper. Mrs. Sawyer seems really nice. She brought me some soap and some personal things. She wasn't too tough on you then? No, oh, no. She was very understanding. She was very close to Heather. That's what she said. She also spoke very highly of you and said she'd be willing to pay your fee. Nice to hear. Can't hurt to have her on our side. Are you having any luck? I've got a couple of suspects and following two other leads. Well, that's good. Right, but on the other hand, it's still not enough. Oh. But hey, we're not done yet either. Hi. How can I help you? 
I dropped a package off for someone at Carson's Coffee House in North Hollywood, and uh, they sent one of your messengers to pick it up. Wondering if you could tell me who picked it up. Carson Coffee House. Mm -hmm. I'll look. Chip. The surfer kid. Chip, surfer, kid. He only worked here two days. That Chip? No. That's who picked up the package. So he's getting into one of your vans. Well, this is terrible. I'll find your package for you. Flip. Hi. Well, how is it going with Heather's computer? Well, not bad, but I still haven't found anything the police didn't find. No, but you're better with computers than the police. Oh, no, now that's true. It's just nothing really of any importance other than the original emails we found. I've used every recovery program out there, and at least nothing looks like it's been shredded. Shredded? That's uh, computer speak, meaning deleted. Hmm. All right, well, do me a favor, wrap it up. I promise Roberta I'd get it back to her today. In the meantime, I have a little footwork and sleuthing for you to do. You need something delivered? Yes, uh, it's it's urgent, and I need a uh, messenger who speaks Spanish. Not a problem. See how the Spaniel. Great. Jorge Vanaki. That's muy importante. I can um, deliver esta paquita a medio monte. No problem, Efe. Voy en camino. That's the guy I'm looking for. I got to deliver this package. Yeah, it's for me. You? I don't think you're Juan Fernandez. Yeah, I don't think you're Chip or Flip either. Huh? I'm Sergeant McBride. Oh, come on, man. Don't hassle me, OK? We picked up a package this morning from Carson's Coffee House. I just want to know where it got delivered. You with INS? Look, I'm going to get a green card. Honest. Right. That's why your manager didn't want to tell me anything about you. He hires illegals. Come on, man. I really need the job. I understand. Tell you what, make you a deal. You tell me where the package got delivered, we never had this conversation. Deal. You give me bad information. Okay. I took it to FEMA Estampa on Wilshire near downtown. Honest? Honest. FEMA Estampa. Okay, thanks. That, that's it? I, I can go? Yep, back to work. You police? No. You lied. Just about my first name. It's not Sergeant.
um, I'm trying to look at a package. It was delivered here today by Unity Courier. Tina Stampa, Mr. McBride. I understand you're looking for a package. Yes, there was one delivered here today by Unity Courier. I'd like to know who got it. Was it the package for you? No. Did you ask the messenger service to deliver the package? Not exactly. Please show Mr. McBride the way out. Thanks. All I needed to know was, it's not anything... I was just curious as to... is going to hurt in it. Hola. Ah. Oh. Yes, Phil. Bride. Hey. All right, so I stopped by the car dealership and a couple of the uh, high-end body shops. Still so far, nothing. Got a couple of places to go. How you doing? Well, I think I might be onto something. I just did a Mexican head dance on a flight of stairs. I'm going to stick around here. See if I can stoop anything else out. You keep looking. Okay. Hey, so you remember I told you I went to the allergist a couple days ago? I got the allergy panel done. Turns out I'm allergic to dog, dust mites, and cats. But I thought I was, I kept thinking it was mold and mildew, remember, because we have the mold in the closet, and I kept sneezing, and I kept thinking, it's Gotta just. go. Restaurant. What brings you here? I'm gonna watch your champ work out? Someone's been snooping around the restaurant asking about that package I picked up for you. What guy? I don't know. I got rid of him. I don't think he'll come back. You did the right thing to come here, tell me. I go back to the restaurant, relax. Huh? The champ work out. I don't recognize you. No. Oh, you're a fan. Oh, yeah, yeah. So you knock out Gordon in the second round last year. Never saw that right coming, huh? Sorry, I can't talk to fans while I'm working out. All right, then. You got time to talk about Heather Bronson and Untouched One? What are you caught? No, a lawyer. I'm representing the woman who's accused of killing Heather. I know that Heather was demanding money from me. I don't have to talk to you. 
Hey, you know what? You're right, you don't. Not here, not now. You can wait till I subpoena you. Testify at a very public murder trial. Hold on a minute. So how'd you find out about me and Heather? It's on the email. On her computer. Addressed to untouched one. What? What makes you think it's me? I sent a package release. You're very clever. Having Escobar pick it up and deliver it to you. So you know that I owe Heather some money, so what? Luis, come on. Heather was blackmailing you, all right? It's gonna come out in a trial. Yeah, you'll bring it up and you'll destroy me. It's not what I want. But it occurs to me, if it comes out that you're one of Heather's customers, you get damaged. With your wife, your kids, your adoring public. So it seems pretty obvious to me that it's in your best interest if Heather is quiet. By killing her. When I drove to Heather's that night, the place was swarming with police, so I just kept going. Anybody see you? Oscar. Who's Oscar? He's my sparring partner. He's also the guy that took me to Heather's that night. Well, you know, I'd like to believe that, but I can't but think Oscar would say anything you told him to. When we didn't drive to Heather's that night, I had Oscar drive me to the Burger Buddy where I signed an autograph for the kid at the takeout window. Okay. I'll check that out. Hey. Get up, huh? Yeah. Hi, Roberta. Nice to hear from you. You changed your mind about dinner? No, but I've got some information that might prove useful for you. Oh, really? Okay, what? That car you were looking for belongs to uh, Becky Sullivan. Her address is in Burbank, 939 and a half Olson Street. She's 23 years old. McBride, are you going through a midlife crisis? Very funny. No, she might have some information that can shine some light on my case. Well, other than a couple of parking tickets, she's a model citizen. Okay, thanks. Oh, listen, if you change your mind about dinner... Hi, Becky. Uh, my name is McBride. I think you picked up a package today that I dropped off at Carson's Coffee House. I took it directly to Chad, just like he told me to. That was pretty neat using that code name, Heartthrob. He sure is. Yeah. Yeah. So you and Chad, you're. Oh no, I work for him. Oh. I'm his assistant. Do you mean that you don't know who Chad Foster is? No. I don't. Who is he? He's only the hunkiest, most handsome television star ever. Huh. Are you a little old to be a personal assistant? Thank you. Yeah. Oh, 
Um, I'm looking for Neil Andrews. What about? Uh, a personal matter. I'm sure it is. Do you have an appointment? No, I, I don't. Leave me your name and number and I'll get back to you about an appointment. Oh, this, this won't take very long. Monday? No. Tuesday? No. Okay. How about a week from Thursday, 4 o'clock? Name? So, so, so he's, he's, he's not in. He's a very busy man, and I'm a very busy woman. If you decide you want the appointment, let me know. All right. Thanks. Investigations. This is the parking garage? I'm afraid someone's run into your car. Did oh. quite a bit of damage. All right, you keep him there. I'll be right there. Oh, God. Why me? Excuse me. You accuse me of cheating on you. You know I love you so much. And cut. That was perfect. Ow. Ow. Okay, let's get ready for my next close-up. Chad Foster. You're with a magazine. I don't do interviews while I'm working unless it's people or TV guy. Not with a magazine. Are you like a fan? Do I look like a fan? I want to talk to you about an email. Sent to Heartthrob. Daniel! You are heart throb, aren't you? You're my bodyguard, right? Act like it and get this guy off my set. My name's McBride. Love your hat. Now. I know the way out. You, brain of a doorknob, come here. How could you be so stupid? I... I just... Stop. I give you one simple little task. A monkey and you screw it up. Now get out of my sight. Get out of my sight. Come on, people. I'm so sorry if I got you in trouble in there. Chai didn't mean to act that way. He's really a great guy. He's just a very private person when he's working. He's been under a lot of pressure since they let him direct. I'm sure it's part of your job, making excuses for him. Becky, listen, Chad might be involved in a murder case. No way. Which one? Heather Bronson. No. I'm working on the case, and it would really be good if I could talk to Chad before the police do. Now. If he is the wonderful guy you say he is, then everything will be fine. Well, I'd hate to see all of this wind up in the tabloids. Chad would hate that. That's why I want to talk to him privately. Maybe at his home. Perhaps I can help him. You're doing the right thing, I promise.
don't care what we discussed. This is getting much more involved than I expected. No, you listen to me. Either we double the ante, or you're on your own. That's more like it. You meet me on Mario's restaurant at 7. We eat, and you pay me. You are an artist, Eve. <laughs> Treat yourself. Thank you. Here, um, this. I'm sure you're gonna love this. Goo! Oh my gosh! Chad? What are you doing here? So, would you like to talk about Heartthrob's email now or later when I subpoena you? So, did America's Heartthrob just forget to invite the girls today? Every woman in America who watches daytime television is in love with me. If you tell anybody about this get-together, you will destroy the illusion. Oh, boy. Chad, you know what? Your lifestyle is none of my business. You know what is my business? Finding the person that actually killed Heather Bronson so that an innocent woman doesn't get burned for it. I don't know anything about that. Really? You know Heather, though, huh? Because she was blackmailing you. When I go out in public, I have to keep that fantasy alive from all my fans who expect me to always have a beautiful woman by my side. Right. Heather's girls are all beautiful sophisticated and discreet. I trusted Heather like I trusted her girls. It never dawned on me that she would try to extort one. And yet Heather was murdered the very night you were supposed to show up and give her that money. But I didn't do it because I was here. Much as I hated Heather for what she was doing to me, I was gonna pay her. What else was I supposed to do? Getting that much cash together on the sly was harder than I expected. Good thing I have a lot of experience living a lie, huh? Chad, you want me to come? No, I don't want you to come pick me up. I told you I was gonna get there on my own. You sound like you're mad at me. Daniel, I'm not mad at you, all right? I'm fine. Dude, it's kind of late. You know what time it is? I mean, come on, come I'm on. I'm aware that it's 11 o'clock, okay? Just earn your keep and cover for me for a little while. My bodyguard wanted to give me a lift, but I wanted to take care of this myself. But then the whole point became moot. While no details are currently available, police immediately arrested and took into custody her alleged killer at the scene. Heather Bronson was reported... I was off the hook. I was relieved, but I lost the only person I trusted in this town. Chad, that is um, not a very good alibi. Maybe not, but it's the truth. You know what? Look, I want to tell you something. I'm not here to accuse you. I'm a defense attorney. My job is to prove reasonable doubt to a jury that somebody else had better motive and better opportunity to commit the crime than my client. Now, you definitely had motive. Blackmail's always been a really good one, and you had an opportunity. As far as opportunity, it doesn't seem like anybody can corroborate where you were the night Heather was murdered. Get out. Get out. All right, yeah.
Yes, okay, thank you, Mrs. Golsky. No, I don't see any reason why you have to be called as a witness. Goodbye. What happened to you? Don't ask. <laughs> the sacrifice I made to get close to Neil Andrews. Wow. I certainly hope the information was worth the sacrifice. I just talked to Chad Foster's agent. He's got an alibi. Well, well, I definitely think Neil Andrews is involved. I think we just need to find out how deeply. You better be right. You know, we're running out of time. Got to hope that Neil Andrews can poke a hole in the alibi of one of our suspects. Quit it. <laughs> From the sound of the phone conversation I overheard, we should meet the person who put him up to hacking into Heather's computer. If you're right, I'll pay to get your hair fixed. Cute. What's she doing here? Didn't you say she visited Marilyn at the jail? Yeah. Maybe she hired a private eye to track down some evidence to help prove Marilyn's innocence. Do you want anything else? No, thanks. Glad to see you decided to see things my way. What choice did I have? What was that about? I had a bad feeling about this. Can I help you? Remember me? Neil, 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 do you really want to make a scene here? What do you want? So you're doing a little PI work for Victoria Sawyer? Well, that's none of your business. Well, besides that envelope, she obviously pays very well. And who are you? I'm a lawyer. I'm representing the young lady accused of killing Heather Bronson. Glad to see you got your Viper repaired. Class Body Shop does some nice work. Victoria Sawyer paid you to hack into Heather Bronson's computer? You know, come on. She just walked in here and gave you an envelope so full of cash you could choke a horse. Now, what did she want off of Heather's computer? Philip, didn't you say that you thought Neil left Heather's house so quickly he probably didn't have a chance to wipe his fingerprints off her computer keyboard? Mm-hmm, I did. Hmm. How do you explain that little detail to the police? Like I said... I don't know what you're talking about. <sighs> Clearly, Victoria didn't hire Neil to protect Heather's reputation. That's hardly old news. You know, Heather's operation, I mean, it was high-end from the very beginning. That takes bankrolling. <laughs> Maybe Victoria's desire to help women in trouble wasn't completely altruistic. We've got to find a way to attach Victoria to Heather financially in order to prove motive. Got to be something we missed. Yep. And the cause of death was? Blunt force trauma to the left side of the victim's head. Primarily the temple. Death from the blow is instantaneous. This is People's Exhibit B. Is this the instrument that caused Miss Bronson's death? Yes. We found strands of her hair and blood matted on it. Did you find any fingerprints on this? Yes, but unfortunately it was so dirty with soot the prints were too smudged to make a positive identification. This instrument of death is solid wrought iron. I'll bet a hard enough swing even by a ten-year-old could have caused the victim's death. Never mind that of a healthy 23-year-old woman. Objection, leading the witness. Sustained. No more questions. Your witness, Mr. McBride. This blow, to which side of the head was it? The left. The left. Would that have any bearing on whether the murderer was left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. So a right-handed blow to the head, the left side of the head. Do you know that Miss Fletcher is left-handed? Objection. The defendant could have used a backhand motion with her left hand or held the murder weapon with both hands. Sustained. No further questions. Officer, you were the first to arrive on the scene? Yes. Would you please tell the court what happened? I was making my regular rounds of the neighborhood shortly after 10 p.m. I noticed that the front door of the Bronson home was open and I heard a scream. What did you discover? 
As I entered the home, the defendant was running toward me. What was her state of mind? She was upset. What did you do? I didn't know who she was, so I stopped her from leaving and questioned her. Then I went to look at the victim. What did you see? Ms. Bronson on the floor. She was dead. Did you see anything else? Yes, a uh, fireplace poker lying on the floor near the body. Did you see anyone else? No, just the defendant. No more questions, thank you. Your witness, Mr. McBride. <clears throat> Officer, you said that Miss Fletcher was upset when you first saw her? Yes. Now, isn't it possible that she was upset because she had just discovered a dead body? Yes, I guess so. Objection, speculation. Sustained. You also stated that uh, there was a fireplace poker on the floor next to the body of the deceased? Yes. Well, from all the uh, soot on here, it looks like, uh, it looks like it's gotten a lot of use. Officer, how did you detain the defendant after you met her? I placed her in handcuffs and sat her in a chair in the foyer. Handcuffs. Did you happen to see any soot on her fingers when you applied the handcuffs? No. Okay. Nothing further. Court is adjourned until tomorrow morning, 9 a.m. This is so tedious. Uh. We've searched everything twice, and we've got nothing to tie Victoria to Heather in any way as a suspect. I don't understand. No diary, nothing written down. She must have kept some sort of record of her clients. You know, we're going to look pretty stupid going after a pillar of society like Victoria Sawyer without anything concrete. The DA will have our heads. I know. Isn't interesting? What? We should meticulously alphabetize all of these rock albums, and yet there's this Christmas album stuck right in the middle of all of them. It looks homemade. What do you mean? The CD doesn't have any label on it or anything. I see. There's information on this. her benefactor. I thought of Heather as the daughter I never had. She was a very bright and capable young woman. And I am sure you are. Legal problems as well. Heather made a terrible mistake. Are you familiar with a gentleman named Neil Andrews? He's in court today. Sir Andrews, would you stand up, please? Do you recognize him? Yes, I'm acquainted with Mr. Andrews. How? Oh. Mr. Andrews is a private investigator. I used his services on a few occasions to do some background checking on my prospective employees. Thank you. Is it true that you met with Mr. Andrews last night at Mario's restaurant? He was giving me a report of a confidential matter. Do you know Amy Wade? No. Miss Wade, would you stand up, please? Objection. What does this have to do with the case at hand? Your Honor, this has everything to do with the case at hand. If you give me a moment, I can prove it. Overruled. Do you recognize her? No. Thank you. Miss Wade is a cocktail waitress at Mario's restaurant. And in her sworn deposition, she states that she witnessed you give Mr. Andrews an envelope filled with cash. I'm curious, do you, you always pay cash for services rendered? No, as a matter of fact, I don't. However, I was concerned about someone working in the accounting department in my foundation. 
I was checking to see if the cash advances, how they were being dealt with. So I took cash that night. Would it be fair to say that your reputation as a woman who is very involved with charities, work is important to you? Yes, it is. I have a list here of some of the charitable organizations with which you're involved. Very impressive list. Crush Foundation, Women Boards Review, the Arlington Foundation, the Human Society, the Art Council, the National Foundation of Human Rights, the list goes on and on. You are a busy woman. Yes, I am. There's one organization here that you obviously founded since it bears your name. The Victoria Sawyer Institute. Could you um, define its purpose for us? Objection, Your Honor, this is irrelevant. The defense is wasting the court's time. Your Honor, I assure you this is anything but irrelevant. I just need a little more leeway. Overruled. You proceed, Mr. McBride, but do not try the patience of this court. Thank you, Your Honor. Miss Sawyer. The Victoria Sawyer Institute was founded to help young women in difficult circumstances. And homeless women abused, women uh, juvenile delinquents? We prefer to use the term disadvantaged. Isn't that how you first met Heather Bronson? Yes. Heather had enormous potential. I nurtured her for many, many years. In fact, I had hoped to eventually turn the foundation over to her. Then you must have been more than a little disappointed when she ran into trouble. Yes. I tried to counsel her. Obviously, she didn't listen. But you stood by her. Matter of fact, you were even a character witness at her trial, when she was charged with pandering and running a high-end escort service. Yes, I wanted to help. This time, I'd like to introduce into evidence defense exhibit G, a computer CD found in Heather Bronson's home. This is a transcript of the contents of that CD. It has been verified and notarized by an independent stenographic firm. Ms. Sawyer, would you please read the highlighted portion of that transcript aloud? Ms. Sawyer. You may proceed. I didn't realize how lucrative the business would become, nor how distinguished and well-known the clientele would be. I guess that is all a tribute to the person who taught me everything I know, and who laid the groundwork during her years in the... I'm sorry, let me help you. The person who laid the groundwork in her years in the business. My mentor, my savior, my friend. Stop. My silent partner, Victoria Sawyer. If we read further, we discover that Miss Sawyer was receiving a substantial percentage of all of Heather's proceeds. But after the trial, well, Unfortunately, Heather had become very accustomed to her lifestyle, so she needed to find another business. And she began extorting money from her wealthy clients. And you, Miss Sawyer. That's absurd. That's motive. And I think I can prove it. not only stopped paying you, she told you she wanted money from you. So you want to see her and have it out with her. Victoria, I wasn't expecting you. This isn't a good time. How could you do this to me? Your actions weren't premeditated, but your anger at the woman you had helped exploded. Now, I took you from nothing and gave you everything. Is this the way you repay me? Yes, you taught me everything I know, including how to survive. Ah! great. I won't let you do this to me. Then pay me. You made me who I am. Now deal with it. 
How dare you talk to me like that? And pay me! Uh, no! Uh, uh, no! Uh, I'm sure that you couldn't believe what you had just done. All you could think of was getting out of there. Miss Bronson? Miss Bronson? Heather? It must have been heartbreaking, having the one person you love and trust to turn on you like that. But, like Heather, who didn't care who she hurt, you're allowing an innocent person to take responsibility for your crime. I wasn't there. You are saying these terrible things in an effort to save your client. I won't be treated this way. You're walking on very thin ice here, Mr. McBride. Yes, Your Honor. By the way, how's your hand? When we first met, you said that you had injured it when your dog bit you. Yes, he's a very sweet dog. But he's a puppy that's young and rambunctious. Jack Russell Terrier, I believe. Yes. That's what I thought. You recognize Miss Susan Watson? She's the breeder who sold you your dog. You know, it's interesting, though. On the papers, registering the sale, have you buying it the day after Heather was murdered? Why would you tell me your dog bit you before you even bought it? I think you bought that dog so you could blame a bite on it, but not a dog bite. A bite inflicted by Heather during the struggle. That is a lie. Would you mind removing the bandage, proving me a liar? <laughs> Miss Sawyer? I am not on trial here. No, you're not. You don't have to do it. Well, the court issue a subpoena. The police will have you do it later. And when you do, I'm sure that they will match the bite mark on your hand with Heather's bite mark, and then we'll know who actually killed Heather Bronson. I don't have to stand for this. You have no right. No further questions. The defense rests. The witness is dismissed. Defendant Marilyn Fletcher. Not guilty. Court dismissed. Defendant is free to go. <laughs> I'll miss you most of all. Thank you. Well, when you know you're right, you are tenacious, aren't you? Oh. I do admire that. Well, speaking of tenacity, how would you like to celebrate? Roberta. I'll call you. Okay. Norman. You are seeing Norman Collins. Yes. Further enhanced 
beauty of your property. Some nice green shrubbery and bushes, just like you asked for. Huh? Beautiful, huh, Jesse? I think that was a no. Keep thinking. Please, McBride. I'm an attorney. Seems like you need one. What's another name for smart? Why are you going with this, Mr. McBride? Tom. My client's life is at stake. And dedicated. I don't like to see anybody get railroaded. The name is McBride. He's gonna hurt in it. And justice is.